Today I'll take this enclosure with nothing in it but a cork bark background and build a bioactive vivarium for my morning geckos step by step. Well here is the Exoterra 12 by 12 by 18 inch vivarium along with the light. This is an LED light. It's the um, any herps. Uh, I don't want to aim it directly at the camera because it's too bright but it's a value grow um, bulb. I've used LED lights from any herb quite a bit and I really like them. They last a long time and they produce great light. So the next step is to add the drainage layer. Okay, here is some of the lightweight drainage layer substrate, also known as feather light. We want about a two inch layer. I just rinsed this. You want to pre-rinse it because it's quite dusty. So I'll put in the first bit there and we'll see how much more we'll need. We flatten it out. Okay, I probably need a little more than that. Just make sure it's nice and flat and even throughout the vivarium. Okay, well, I think that looks pretty good. So now we'll add the separator, the screen, to make sure that it's in there nice and even. Oh, don't want to move that there. And of course the purpose of this is to keep the ABG style mix or the, the aerobic substrate that the plant roots actually grow in the most from falling down in here and getting wet and boggy and nasty. It's a little bit difficult to do this while making sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. Hmm, not quite even. I want to make sure I have a little bit of overlap on each side. It looks like the overlap on the right side is more than that on the left, so I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. So we have some overlap on both sides. That looks better. And now I'll be adding the layer of the any herp substrate. This particular version of the substrate is for slightly less humid vivariums than say a dart frog vivarium. It contains things like um, sphagnum moss, as you can see there, cypress mulch, fir bark, a little cocoa fiber. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty fluffy and lightweight. It uh, allows water to pass right through it. It'll stay moist, but it won't get soaked. And um, there's plenty of air pockets for oxygen, for microfauna, uh, for, and for the plant roots. That's why you wouldn't want to use something like cocoa fiber on a layer like this. You wouldn't get the um, oxygen uh, to pass through the substrate and to you know keep it aerobic. You wouldn't get the water to pass through as readily and you'd end up with kind of a mucky mess. So this stuff helps make sure the plant roots and the microfauna are all happy, making sure the bioactive vivarium performs as it should. Here's another bag of the substrate. May or may not use this whole bag. In this one you can see some of the pieces of activated charcoal. Um, calcined clay is also another um, component of this substrate. Let's see how that looks. Okay, a little more would be good. Okay, something like that. Just about. I think that ought to do it. I might even take out a little bit of that as I uh, progress through the planting and so on. We'll see. Okay, I took out a couple of handfuls of the substrate and I'm now going to add some water to it. This is just filtered water. I'm not going to use distilled water here because it's nice to have some minerals in the water that goes down here in the substrate, um, too much distilled water could possibly leach substances out of the you know, plant roots. At least some people think that that may happen. So I'm going to 
just use this filtered water and then to spray the vivarium I use distilled water so that I don't get water spots on the glass and that works pretty well for me. Right now the substrate is soaking up most of this as it should since it's dry. Once it's wetter a lot of it will go down into the drainage layer. Okay now the water has gone through the substrate and is in the drainage layer. There's about an inch of it. I don't really want any more than that. So now it's time to do some landscaping. I want a hide for the geckos. They, they tend to, be, you know, they want several places to hide in fact, but I don't want uh, one that's difficult to remove when I need to collect young or different things or move any of the adults for whatever reason. So I'm going to use some cork bark, which is of course very light, but it also provides like some nice cave areas for them for laying eggs and things like that. And I kind of like this piece. Let's see if I can maybe set it, position it something like that. I'll probably play with that a little bit more and add some more pieces at some point. But now let's look at planting. I processed all my plants with a bleach dip before um, putting them in. It's always a good idea to keep uh, any pests from making their homes in your vivarium. So I've done that already. I think I want this one somewhere around here. It'll be the tallest plant in the vivarium, at least for now, so I kind of want it to serve as the focal point. How does that look? Well, that's kind of nice. It's going to shade some other parts of the vivarium, though. Uh, I might want to scoot it over just a little bit so that it doesn't shade some of the other spots quite as much. But I don't want to crowd it either. That's, that's the trick. Yeah, I think that looks all right. Now, foreground, I'm going to put a little patch of this uh, Pilea plant. Maybe where it's nice and bright here. It's not really shaded. I may find I have to trim back the, the palm, the Bella palm. I didn't even say what it was. I may have to trim that back quite a bit to keep it from shading things, but that's okay. I'm going to have to trim it back anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's see. There. Hopefully that plant does all right. I tried some of this in another vivarium at one point and it didn't do that well for me, so hopefully this one does better. And now I have these three dwarf sansevierias, or um, this is a plant that's in the same genus as the sansevieria trifasciata, which is the most common one in the hobby. It's used a lot in vivariums. It gets a lot bigger than this. This is a dwarf type. It's not a cultivar. It's a different species. I'm not sure which species, but I got several of these, found these at the local nursery and thought I couldn't pass them up because they're so hardy and it would be nice to have a dwarf uh, type in here because it's kind of a small vivarium and I think um, it will set off the geckos nicely. So we'll see if I can make a little patch of them here. Maybe I'll turn that one around a little bit. This one scooted over. And the third one maybe a little bit more forward. Something like that. Yeah. And now Time for the leaf litter layer. As you can tell maybe by the fact that it's in a baking pan, 
I just sanitized these leaves, put them in the oven at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes or so. Then I turned off the heat and let them sit in there for a while. So that should go a long way towards keeping any pests from coming from these leaves. The microfauna, the isopods and springtails like a nice deep layer of this stuff. It's kind of challenging to get it around the plants. I've noticed that the morning geckos will also hide in this layer as well, especially if there are larger leaves. These leaves aren't that big, but it's good for hatchling geckos to hide in, especially if I have a hatchling or two in here and don't discover it immediately. It's nice to have them, to offer them plenty of hiding places. So in addition to being good for the microfauna, be great for those hatchlings. Okay, now I'm gonna put that bark hide back in there to figure out what the best position for it is. Something like that is what I was thinking of. Well, and that's not bad. Let's play around with that a little bit. See what it looks like in different positions. The important thing is that it looks good and that uh, geckos have a good place to hide that I can easily remove, so. Any position that fits those criteria should be fine. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. And the beauty of it is I can move it whenever I feel like I want to. And now it's time for the microfauna. I'm gonna put some springtails in there. Let's see if I can get this to focus on the springtails. You can see some of them running around. Okay, we're gonna toss some of those in there. All right, I'm also going to put some dwarf Costa Ricans in here. I don't know, you can see a couple of them running around the top. There's probably a couple dozen in there. So let's put some of those in. And I'll cover those up with a little bit more leaf litter in just a second. I want to give them a fighting chance once the geckos get in there because they will eat small isopods if given the chance. I have noticed that the dwarf Costa Ricans will survive um, in the vivarium with the morning geckos. And then the last species of isopod I'm gonna put in for now at least, right here, I don't know if you can see those very well, but these are dwarf striped isopods. I've got about a dozen of them in here. Let's see, does that help if I move the light a little bit, maybe? Uh, you can see one or two in there. And those, as far as I've been able to tell, are parthenogenic. So if we can get even one of them to start reproducing, we'll probably be okay. There's one more. A little stubborn one doesn't want to move. Okay. I'll kind of bury those a little bit and add a little bit more leaf litter. Oh, sorry, I messed up the focus, didn't I? Okay. Kind of hide those a little better with a little more leaf litter. There we go. Now I think we're ready to add the morning geckos. So I just uh, captured these three from the nano vivarium. These are mature individuals are close to mature and uh, there's one more that I'm waiting for to extricate herself from her hiding place. But in the meantime, we can release these into the vivarium. Those two lost no time. I'm gonna get some close up shots of them exploring their new home here. This is that one that's very, very gravid. You can see kind of the pale sides to her abdomen that's a bit swollen. I would be surprised if uh, she didn't uh, deposit her eggs within the next uh, few days. Hopefully she chooses a good egg de deposition site. Uh, they, morning geckos can be kind of hit or miss when it comes to choosing a good spot to lay their eggs. Uh, one good thing about this vivarium is that the background is cork bark and they'll often choose cork bark. Uh, a lot of times they'll choose a, an area high up in the vivarium, but uh, we'll see what happens. 
I'm just hoping she doesn't uh, put it right on the door or something so that I can't uh, avoid crushing the eggs when I open the door because that's happened before. You can see here how she's using her tongue to sort of taste the air and get an idea of her new environment. The morning geckos seem pretty happy with their new vivarium, and I think I am too. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday, all related to keeping aquarium and vivarium pets. You're most welcome to leave a comment and a like, and for those of you who are waiting for an animal voiceover at the end, subscribe.